Hello and welcome. My name is Mr. J.M. Kimani, a lecturer in quantitative analysis. Welcome to the topic queuing theory, lesson one. Now, queuing theory, we look at the waiting lines, look at the service costs, look at the waiting costs, all these to, ab to be able to advise accordingly on uh, what to do as a company to minimize uh, the cost of service. It is going to be expensive if we maintain long queues or the waiting lines. So therefore, it is the interest of the company, uh, just like it is the interest of uh, the uh, service providers and those who consume services to minimize the cost or to minimize the time uh, as you are waiting for the service and also as you are receiving the service. So because of that, we have the need for the queuing uh, theory uh, to be studied. Now, queuing theory is the study of waiting lines which consist of one or more customers waiting to be served. In queuing theory, we analyze the following costs, waiting costs and service costs. Waiting costs are costs incurred by the customers waiting on the line. These costs decrease as the service level increases. Service costs are cost incurred when the customer is being attended to at the service facility. The service cost increases as the level or the service level increases. Therefore, the total cost in queuing is the sum of the service cost and the waiting cost. The main problem in queuing is to determine the optimal service level which minimizes the total cost. Now, we are saying that um, the problem of queuing is to determine the minimum. So this is a total cost, which is actually the waiting cost plus the service cost. Now, we are saying that... Um, the waiting cost is the cost that uh, the customer incurs when he is waiting on the line. And even the company may also uh, have some share uh, to incur when the customers are waiting uh, on the line to uh, receive or to uh, get a uh, service. But to come to service cost are now the cost the company incurs when they are serving the customer. So we are saying that the minimum costs is that cost that we are going to balance these two because this waiting cost, it increases, the waiting cost here increases while the service cost decreases depending with the service level, service level. That the waiting cost is going to increase if the service level is low. So this is um, low service level while uh, the uh, service cost is going to decrease uh, with the same low service level meaning what that um, if we have customers waiting for so long because of the low service level at the cashier's desk at the ATM at the service bay, then of course we'll be having a lot of cost. And this is what uh, makes customers be furious about the service they're getting from, a, from a, a company. And therefore, we need to increase on the service level so that now we can minimize the waiting cost. Then uh, by having the low service level, then you're saying that um, uh, we are going to increase uh, to, to, to decrease the service cost because even the machinery that are being used in providing the service so are not expensive that uh, we are not in incurring so much. But of course, if you increase the service level, that means you must bring the machinery uh, to give to provide service. So this is the cost of providing service. It's going to be lower if uh, we are having low service level, but it's going to be higher should we uh, boost our services. For example. If we bring more cashiers 
then of course we'll be having higher service cost and actually uh, we are going to uh, fasten and increase the service uh, level so we take a lower or either a faster uh, means of providing service but of course we need uh, to, uh, to bring more cashiers so to balance these costs is our concern and that's what we would want to advise so a company should actually work on the minimum cost so in actual sense we are saying that um, uh, graphically graphically if on the y-axis we are having the cost of operating cost that is so you can have here the operating cost and here we can have the service level that we are having the waiting cost this is waiting cost and you're having the service cost this is service cost that the the higher the service level the the lower the waiting cost because the customers are able to be served very fast lines are moving lines are moving uh, faster when you have a higher service level so therefore the waiting cost is lower but as lines are moving it's because you have invested heavily on uh, the service provision and therefore you're incurring more cost of providing service this cost of uh, service uh, provide serving this is the waiting time uh, cost now we are saying that um, we can only minimize the cost so our cost is going to be minimum let's say here so this is going to be our cost is not uh, always at the center but um, is where the two costs, the, the waiting cost is much lower uh, and the service cost uh, is going to be compensated with the uh, low waiting cost and therefore this is supposed to be the optimal service level optimal service level while this is the minimum cost minimum cost so this is now the total cost this is total cost so it's now the most uh, important thing here is to understand uh, the impact of the service level on the cost and the two costs so therefore the total cost is going to be lower at some point and that's our interest and therefore should we have the operating uh, cost or the total cost a function then in calculus we can actually differentiate that now the rate of change on the total cost is at zero so what we call the derivative derivative here is going to be zero and as we differentiate we are able to know the uh, kind of service level we need to have here that is the optimal anyway having said that then uh, we would want to look at um, uh, the important areas and uh, the areas are as follows so the waiting time and idle time cost just to focus on this um, in order to solve a queuing problem service facility must be manipulated so that an optimum balance is obtained between the cost of waiting time and the cost of idle time the cost of waiting customers generally include either the, the indirect cost of lost business this is because people go somewhere else but uh, uh, less than they had uh, intended to or do not come again in future or direct cost of idle equipment and persons for example cost of truck drivers and equipment waiting to uh, to be unloaded or cost of operating an airplane or ship uh, ship waiting to land or dock we say that uh, we have some indirect costs and direct cost indirect costs are now like the cost of um, uh, loading or of loading so you can be able to see literally you're waiting uh, for loading and of loading uh, to be done and uh, the, you may actually take longer to uh, have that kind of service 
or else we have indirect cost which is like um where a, a customer would come sign in but again would not wait there would uh, go somewhere else or even we may, may leave that business or may leave that uh, facility and go to get the service elsewhere you have lost business that lost business is what we are saying is indirect uh, cost so our concern is about such uh, cost both direct and indirect that um, the cost of lost business is not easy to assess vehicle drivers um, wanting petrol will avoid pumps having long queues to determine how much business is lost some type of experiment exper experimentation and data collection is required cost of idle service uh, facilities is the payment to be made or uh, to the servers engaged at the facilities for the period for which they remain idle so you say that um indirect cost is not going to be easy to actually est uh, establish because it is not there is no even cash outflow when a customer does not uh, come for the service you may not say that there is any cash outflow but we look at the opportunity cost that uh, that is the amount of money that you would have earned if you gave the service to that customer you would have earned that amount therefore having not earned that amount of money indirectly you have lost and that is our concern so therefore we require to regulate the the, the service facility whether to increase or decrease just an example let's say we have atm facilities How, where should we increase the atm machines or should we decrease should we deploy more cash, uh, cashiers or less at what time should we deploy more cashiers at what time should we deploy uh, less cashiers so our concern is how to regulate this service facility in order to attract less cost both waiting and uh, service provision that is uh, the concern we have now the uh, components the key components of queuing are one arrivals or calling pop, uh, population two waiting line and three service channel or facility those are the key components for example the where are you getting the customers from so this is the calling population so is it from um, outside is this is it uh, from uh, the from the masses or is it um, from customers who are already uh, identified as member customers so that is also very important uh, then waiting line that's true so we would want to know the size of uh, the queue length that is uh, whether longer or shorter and also the service uh, channel or facilities is it um, uh, many providers or less providers is it a single channel or what kind of a uh, channel do we have we are going to look at that uh, later operating characteristics of queuing system operating characteristics of queuing system now analysis of a queuing system involves a study in its different operating characteristics uh, some are one the queue length which is the average number of customers in the queue waiting to get a uh, service this excludes the customers being served then you have uh, the service length the average number of customers in the system including those waiting uh, waiting as well as those being served then number three waiting time in the queue which is the average time uh, for which a customer has to wait in the queue to get service number four total time in the system is the average total time spent by a customer in the system from the moment he arrives till he leaves the system it is taken to be the waiting time plus the service time and five utilization factor it is the proportion of time a server actually spends with the customer it is also called traffic intensity now look at those operating characteristics very important like you would want to know when come to the length of the queue are we counting those who are uh, at this at the waiting launch or either those who are in the system waiting at the launch and also uh, being served sometimes we may have few people waiting but you have a lot of people being served so we would have uh, we'd want to have uh, to have concern on that or the vice versa uh, a few a lot of people waiting at the uh, launch and a uh, few people being served so you may get maybe into a particular facility you find that there is only one service uh, bay or one service facility that tells you what we have few people or one people being served but we have whole lot of people 
that are waiting on the line. So that is also not going to be good uh, for both the service provider and uh, the consumer of the service. When it comes to time also, what is the average time a customer spends while waiting for the service? And also, what time does a customer spend when getting the service? So in this case, we, would, we, we can manage to reduce the waiting time but again, we are not uh, reducing maybe the service time. But, but all in all, this one should go hand in hand. In hand. That if you minimize the service time, that means that uh, you are able to service customers uh, within a very short time. So those who are waiting also wait within a very short time. But if you have a longer time to serve the customer, then of course these people who are waiting, we are going to wait for longer. So therefore, the higher the service time, the higher the waiting time.